If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be talking about budget decks. So I know that Percival got limited in Gold Paladin for V Premium, meaning that there aren't going to be as many opportunities for Bluish Flames to really excel in the meta, but it's a great opportunity for new players that want to get into V Premium and are interested in building Gold Paladin. I think this is a great place to start because not only are most of the cards easily accessible and new, but they're also really cheap. Without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into this Prominence Core deck profile that's kind of geared more towards new players. We're gonna go ahead and start with the starter like we do in most deck profiles. It's gonna be Spring Breeze Messenger. You can pretty much do any starter you wanna do that's kind of like under 20 cents because most of the starters are gonna be anywhere between like 10 cents to 50 cents. So Spring Breeze is about like 20 cents starting off, so but any starter will pretty much do. And also Spring Breeze just kind of matches the aesthetic. It's blue, it's got blue cape, blue sword, you know, gotta fill with the blue. Now we're moving on to the grade threes. We're starting off with our four copies of Bluish Flame Liberator Prominent Score. So Prominent Score is basically the main way you're gonna build your board and it has crit pressure as well. So it lets you call up to two things when you look at the top four, when you counter blast and retire rear guard. But if you have Percival in the soul, you get to call all four if you want to, or up to four. Second skill is whenever you call an Aglaveil, this gets a crit. And then anything that is called during the main phase, basically, or just basically anything that's placed, Prominence Core itself gets 3k and the unit called gets 3k. So this is gonna keep stacking three, 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 three every time you call something. So it's a really big Vanguard number. Call Agavel gets an extra crit. So you're gonna be swinging for like anywhere between like in the 30s, sometimes like in the 40s if you have a booster. So it's a pretty good Vanguard swing. So and the best part is that um, Prominence Core is like less than a dollar. So it's about a dollar rounding. So if you wanna pick up four copies, about four bucks, and this is like your ace unit of the deck. So going on to the rest of the deck, we're gonna go into our next support card, which is our four copies of Battlefield Storm Sagamore. So Sagamore is when it's placed from hand, you soul blast one, draw a card, call something. So this also helps you build a board. And then anytime you call something, it gets that power from Prominence Core. So you call this, it's 15K, whatever you call it gets another 3K. Uh, the big thing is that it has to be called from hand. So if you call it with Prominence Core's skill, you can't use it, but it's still a great card to help you build a board if it's in your hand. And it lets you proc off abilities of cards like Dindrain and Berengaria. So still a helpful card, you know, and everyone loves a draw. So this is the double R, but there is a reprint of Sagamore, which is like a triple R foiling. And it's like 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents. It's under two quarters. And if you want to pick up a whole play set, it's like about a dollar or a dollar 50. So this is also a really cheap card, really helpful for the deck and just a great addition for any gold paladin deck. So if you want to get into golds, you definitely want to pick up a play set of this. Next up, our last, copy of our great three this is the most expensive card in the deck so this is basically where your money is going and it's about 10 bucks so this is bluish flame liberator percival this is the card they got limited you can't run uh more than one copy in any gold paladin deck in v premium and here's why it's when you place it your your vanguard's great three or greater you kind of blast one discard a card get another excel gift and then you get to search your deck or your drop zone for Aglavail, call it. If you search your deck, you shuffle. So because you're getting another Excel gift, you're obviously getting a draw card from Excel too. And more Excel markers means more field building. And also the big thing is that with, obviously with Prominence Core, when this moves to Soul, you get to call up to four things as opposed to only calling two. Prominence Core still does pretty decent for the most part, even if you don't end up seeing Percival. So, and like I said, this is kind of like a starter deck to get you going into the game if you're kind of new and you just want to like play a game of Vanguard with a V premium deck. So yeah, that's pretty much Percival. Also, it's a good right target. It has a Vanguard skill of all your units on additional markers get 5K. So you ride it, you get two markers, everything on them get 5K. Then you can ride core on top of it if you want to. So that's it for our grade threes. We're going on to our grade twos, starting off with our four copies of both Liberator Aglavale. Super key card of the deck, obviously because it procs specifically with core. So when you call Aglavale, Core gets a crit. Uh, Aglavel bounces back to your hand after it attacks, so then you can set up for next turn. Percival searches for Aglavel, so obviously the minute you call Percival, you have an Aglavel in play. Prominence Core gets the crit, so really good card. This also has a Vanguard skill. When you ride it, you kind of bust one, look at top three, 
call one, the rest go to bottom, so it's a great ride target as well. Definitely want to run four Aglovel if you're playing the Prominence Core deck. And Aglovel also got recently reprinted uh, in the same set that Prominence Core came out, putting it about like a dollar card. So it's another about like four bucks, maybe 350 just to pick up a play set. So easily accessible card. So definitely want to be running four copies of this. In the same set that Prominence Core and the reprinted Aglovel came out, we also got four copies of Liberator of Royalty Fallon. So Fallon's skill is if you call something by a card ability or from your deck, sorry, it gets an extra 5k. So any, anytime you call something from the deck via basically Prominence Core, it's a 14k beater. And then if you call this, it can be a 17k beater, which hits Excel and Protect numbers. Second skill is when this unit's attack hits a Vanguard, Van or Rear, you look at the top card of your deck and you may call it. So you can look at the top, if it's a trigger, you just leave it there. If it isn't, boom, call a unit. That's another thing that's getting 3K from Prominence Core skill. So really helpful card, really good right target. It's a good pressure card and it's really cheap. So this card is like about 50 cents. So, but it could be less, honestly. You could like feel like this card isn't really that relevant in the meta. So like you could basically find a place at anywhere for like a dollar to $2. Nice, good, uh, cheap card to pick up. Three copies of Player of the Holy Bow, Vivian. So Vivian has got a similar situation to Sagamore where um, it can only be called from hand because its effect doesn't work when you call it from the deck. So Vanner Rear when placed from hand, Counterblast, Soul Blast, look at top three of your deck, call a card, put the rest on your bottom. This gets an extra 3K. So if you call this from hand, it gets 3K from Prominence Core. Its own skill gets another three, putting it at 15K just by itself. The skill works when you write it too. So all of your or most of your grid twos are pretty much go-to right targets. It's around like $1.50 per copy. So obviously if you wanna kind of cut it down and you feel like maybe this isn't really worth it, you can obviously switch this out for something else like maybe like Kaiden, or if you wanna play a common, like um, the Eagle, that's other things that you can do instead. But I feel like because um, without Percival and this like deck maxed out to four, there's a lot of field build lack in the deck. And also Vivian helps you call stuff from the deck. So it helps proc off Fallon, helps proc off Josephus. So these are other reasons why I think Vivian is a good addition to the budget deck. The last card I'm putting for grade twos is Berengaria. So Berengaria uh, is simply just when it's placed by a card ability, you're gonna soul blast and counter charge. It has the other skill to counter blast and soul charge, but there's no need to waste your counter blast for that when Aglovale fills your soul for you. So you're using it for the counter charge skill just because you're gonna be using a lot of counter blasts potentially throughout the game, using core over and over and over again. If you see Percival, you wanna have open counter blast for that. So it's just a good little tech if you see it. Um, it works when it's called via Vivian, Fallon, Prominence Core, Sagamore. So there's plenty of ways for you to activate this card when you see it in your deck or in your hand. And best of all, Berengaria is like dirt cheap. It's like 10 cents, 20 cents. So easy, cheap card to run in any Gold Paladin deck. We just finished off grade two, so now we're moving on to grade ones, starting off with another card from the same set as Prominence Core and Fallon. We got Fast Chase Liberator, Josefas. So Josefas' skill is when it's placed from the deck, you Soul Blast 1 to counter charge, and then you can Soul Blast 1 to draw. You could do both, you can do one or the other, uh, or you could do none of them if you choose to. It also has a good skill when you write it. It's if you write another unit on top of it, you look at the top card of your deck and you may call it. So if you look, it's a trigger, you can leave it there. If you look and it's a good thing, you wanna call, boom, call it. Cephas is great when it's called from the deck, it's great when you write it, and it helps you counter charge and draw cards. So definitely wanna run it at four for the Liberator deck. Now we're moving on next to the grade ones. We got another card that got reprinted, even though I'm using the uh, BT12 version here. There is another reprint that came with Aglovale, Core, and Fallon and Cephas. Came in the same set. This is Gorbaduck. Gorbaduck's skill is when it's placed, Van or Rear, you look at the top five, look for a grade three, add it to your hand. If you added one, you discard a card, shuffle. And the second skill is if you called two or more things during the turn, it gets 5k. We're using it mostly just because we want to search out Prominence Core to be our main ride, but also we want to search out Percival. So this gives you multiple opportunities to search out Percival. The one thing is that it does have to be called from hand. Place it from hand, you can write it, top five, look for a grade three, Easy peasy. Even if you look for a Sagamore, that's a card that helps you build your board. So Gorbadak is definitely a really important card. Uh, pricing, before I forget, it's really cheap too after it's reprinted. It's like a 50 cent card, maybe a dollar. You're pretty much gonna find it for like 50 cents for the most part. Next up for grade ones, this one's really important to almost every gold paladin deck. 
four copies of Listener of Truth, Dindrain. So Dindrain skills when it's placed by card ability, you can soul blast to draw or counter charge. If you counter charge, you get 3k. So this works when it's called by being called from the deck or being called from hand via Sagramore. You can have many different ways to activate this effect. The draw is helpful, the counter charge is helpful, and most importantly, it's a really cheap card because of how many times this card's been reprinted. So it's gonna be like around a dollar, maybe even less, like 80 cents, something like that. Super cheap card, super helpful card. Almost every gold pout in deck is running this so even if you're starting out and you want to kind of like work your way up to building a better deck you're going to want four of this in the future anyways so we just finished off with grade ones now we're moving on to our grade zeros starting with the most important and probably the only expensive trigger in this whole deck which is four copies of halo shield mark draw pgs are always going to be needed in most of the premium decks and even if you're trying to build a v premium deck without the draw PGs, at some point you're probably gonna want them so it's good to invest in them. PGs, what they always do is they nullify your opponent's attack when you put it in the guard circle and you discard a card and it's a, it's a trigger. So, you know, you can drive check it, damage check it and it helps you get more cards in your hand. The PGs are a little bit pricey though. PGs are gonna run anywhere between like $6 to $10 depending on what deck you're gonna build. Thankfully for Gold Paladin, it's like kind of like roughly around the $4, $3 range. So you're gonna be spending anywhere between 10 to 12 dollars for a playset but alternatively you could run the sentinel crit sentinel crits are super cheap so if you want to go for like a 12 crit variant you could go with that if you kind of want to save money on the triggers but i would just say invest in draw pgs just because they're good you're going to use them down the line eventually so might as well get them now next up we got the dirt cheap cards which are our triggers so we're running a front focused deck because you're going to be building a lot of board so might as well give that board extra power so we're running eight fronts. Front trigger is always gonna be like anywhere between like 25 cents and 50 cents a piece. So you're looking at like, nah, $1.50 per play set. So that's just how our triggers are at this point. But if you're lucky, maybe you'll run into someone at a card shop and you're just like, hey, you got front triggers for this clan? And they're like, here you go, I got extras. It's always nice to ask your locals for commons, especially if your cart, if the owner of the shop that you're at just has a bunch of boxes with commons and they don't really care about them, you can look through those, pick out commons from them as well. But if you're doing everything exclusively online, it's still not that big of a deal. Because we're budget, we're gonna stick with our four vanilla heal triggers, the one with the 20K shields. These are also dirt cheap. They're like maybe 50 cents a piece. Same situation as the front triggers. Hopefully, as a new player, you're gonna be working your way up to heal guardians. Heal guardians are the grade three heal triggers. They're pretty expensive for starting out new. They're anywhere between like seven to $12. Sometimes it can be up to 15, depending on who you're buying it from. And also if the trigger is from a deck that's like tier one. But if you're starting out, you just need the vanillas. So vanilla heals are just fine. If you're starting out, the heal guardian or heal vanillas are perfect. That was it for the main deck. That was all 50 cards. Um, I'll just say that don't forget to get your quick shield. Especially if you're new, quick shields, you can find them in trial decks or you can order them online. I think quick shields should be super cheap. Just make sure that you're getting the common ones that came in the trial decks or the promo ones, not the SP ones. Those are more expensive. They're gonna be the ones with the little clan symbol, but the super cheap ones have like the shield on it. So yeah, pick up a cheap little quick shield. So the next thing I wanna talk about is gift markers. So obviously if you're a newer player, you might be assuming that you don't have any gift markers or any access to any gift markers. And also there aren't really any trial decks that offer Excel markers besides like the Naoki Ishido one, but even that one only comes with Excel one and you'll most likely wanna be using Excel two. So the marker that you're most likely gonna be using in the deck is these, these are Excel two markers. They're the ones where when you place it, you get to draw a card and anything on them get 5K. The regular Excel markers are the Excel ones. So these ones, they don't let you get to draw a card, but whatever is on them gets 10K. The reason people usually go into these is just because an extra draw is always really good. But most importantly, there are Excel markers that are double-sided. So you can pick those up for less than a dollar each. And that way you don't have to pick up like four of these and four of these or like six of these and six of these, whatever, however many times you think you're gonna be riding in a deck. I don't unfortunately have a double-sided Excel marker to show off at the moment, but this is basically what it's like. This is a force marker. It's got the force one on one side and it's got the force two on the other side. There's Excel markers like these. They're less than a dollar. Just spend the extra eight bucks to pick up eight copies and then you'll reuse them for every Excel deck you ever build. So with the main deck profile out of the way, we're just gonna kind of talk about the overall pricing for the deck. So pretty much to build this whole deck, it's gonna cost you around $50, which is kind of like within a budget price range. So for about like 47 to 50 bucks, 
plus the Excel markers, you're looking at around maybe like $55. If maybe you can find someone to just give you Excel markers, even better. But most importantly, this is as budget as budget gets for V Premium, especially for a deck that performs pretty decently if I must say so myself. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you have any other recommendations or any other decks you think I could do that are budget, kind of like around like the 50 to $60 range, let me know in the comment section below. And that'll do it. My name is Richard and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.